Hello, welcome to Geeking Out with Shad. Uh, wasn't that long ago that I had a little complaint about the Volkswagen backing up and slamming on the brakes with the bike rack on the back. So um, I wanted to write some code and show how simple it is to make a determination whether you should slam on the brakes or not if there's an object uh, there. Um, so yeah, let's uh, take a look at the code and I'll just explain a little bit of how it works and then we'll push the little buttons and test it out. So here is the code. Basically, I wrote the simple program and you can see that it's really not that long. I mean, this is oversimplifying it. I'm sure with cars, you got to have a few more variables involved, but uh, it's not get it. It doesn't need to be much more complex than this. So uh, in here, I have uh, a little brake light, we can call this. Um, and then I have the two buttons. This button will run the code with the object getting closer, this button will run the, clo the code with the object being stationary. And I do that by passing in the functions that do that. So if we look through this code, um, I have this function called backup car. Um, the beginning here is I set these things to zero. So car travel to zero, object distance to zero. And then this is just setting the brake uh, uh, element here uh, so I can change its color um, and so basically when I click one of these buttons I'm going to call backup car and then pass in what I want the object to be doing right here so I, re I reset these variables uh, car travel is at zero to start and then the object distance is at 200 so pretend there's a bike rack or a wall like in the case of the object getting closer let's say the wall is 200 and we can use whatever measurement we want we can use millimeters centimeters whatever that's uh, not that important it's basically you're gonna get a number from the device right and then you come down here and so while the car is traveling you know and I I obviously have a limit here so I only want to go to a hundred of whatever these units are um, just to um, stop the loop we don't want it to just indefinitely go so you know we should just put that in there and then uh, so while the car is moving we're gonna check to see if object which we're passing in it may be the stationary object or the getting closer object <laughs> Could be either one right and then the object distance which we set to 200 so and then based on that if the object is equal to the object distance we just remove the stop so that's this uh, red color so we don't put on the brake and otherwise if it if that distance uh, changes then we're going to put on the stop. The faulty thing with this is the car could be going any direction. So this would only uh, apply if the car was going in reverse. I'd have to put some code in here to uh, factor that in for this distance. Um, and then uh, we're going to increment the car travel. And that's just to continue this loop going 100 times, right? Um, and it is a hundred times we're starting at zero. <laughs> so we do loop through a hundred times. Um, so we're going to come down here and you're going to see getting closer subtracts one from the object distance, which is this, or actually no, it's at 200. So it's going to subtract it. So the next time it comes through the loop, this will be 199, right? And then here, when I, pass in stationary when I click the stationary button it's just gonna always return 200 so this is when a bike is on the bike rack the distance isn't gonna get any closer so there's no reason to put on the brake so we're gonna go ahead and test this code so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click the closer button which is gonna pass in the getting closer function which is going to take 
one unit off of the object distance, right? And according to this code, uh, right here, that means they will no longer equal each other, so it should call this brake light and set it to stop, right? So let's click it and see what happens. Now the car put on the brakes. And the reason it put on the brakes was because <laughs> the object distance was getting closer because I took one off of it. So the sensor would actually go and keep sending back the distance as the car is moving. And if that distance got any closer, it should put the brakes on, right? In the case of a bike on the bike rack, that's gonna be stationary, right? So if I click on that, it's gonna call this code backup car with the stationary function it's going to reset these things zero and to 200 and then the car is going to move and while the car is moving it's going to keep returning 200 this object the stationary function down here is going to always return 200 it's going to just keep returning 200 so as long as it's 200 and the object distance is 200 the car should keep moving so really this little tiny bit of code shows an example of how simple it is to write some code to prevent a car from slamming on its brakes because it detects a bike rack or bike a stationary object behind it you should only slam on the brakes <laughs> if that object is continuously getting closer to that car and I just thought it was going to be kind of fun. See here, here's the object getting closer. So let's say there's a wall. You're backing up and you're getting closer to the wall. Well, you want the brake to come on, right? But if you have a bike on, a bike rack on the back and you start to back up, the distance between the bike and the rack and stuff and the car is not going to get any different. It's going to stay the same. So thus, you wouldn't want the brake to go on. So one of the reasons why I want to point this out is as cars become more complex, they start to become software. Like they become very software intensive. There's a lot of hardware in cars and hardware and software are two very different things. Although hardware can have logic in it. It can be hard wired into the chip or whatever and it can't be programmed. And then software is something more like your phone your computer things where it actually can have a program and then that program can get changed or altered over time and that's what why you get updates and things is because a program may have little bugs or faults in it and then they can update it and fix it um, so in the case of like a Volkswagen I don't know whether they have and this goes with all cars with backup cameras and a backup sensor that's gonna make the car throw all these alarms and then slam on the brakes. I'm fine if it gives me an alarm. Like with the moment you start the vehicle and if there's something really close to the back, you want it to alert you that there's something there so you don't start to back up. So the alarm is fine. It's the slamming on the brakes part that bugs me because it makes my head snap back like I wasn't expecting it. and they can prevent that by having code. And whether they put the code in and have it hardwired in, which you can do a very similar thing that I just showed with what's called digital logic. Um, it's probably super complex nowadays compared to when I learned how to do digital logic. But we did some pretty cool stuff just using logic gates and stuff. Um, but the other thing is, is it could be software, which is probably more likely because if you do something in software, you can update it, you can fix bugs. Once you do something with hardware and you put logic in there, if there, if it's faulty, you can't fix it without replacing the chip or whatever. But if you have software, you can update it and fix the problem. So I hope this problem somehow gets fixed because it's really annoying. You should be able to have some kind of rack. I mean, the car comes with the hitch mount. Um, they do have like some kind of trailer thing on there, but the trailer thing and a bike rack thing are very different. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. I just wanted to show really how simple 
It is. I don't even like work in the auto industry. Yeah, <laughs> I do software engineering somewhere else, but it's an easy problem to solve with code. And sure, there's a few more little variables that would need to be in the code beyond what I had, but it really isn't that complicated. <laughs> I appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.